meeting of the 2014-2015 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the evening? Thank you, Mayor. Nobody will ever deprive the American people of the right to vote except the American people themselves, and the only way they could do this is by not voting. Thank you very much, very apropos. Uh, next is the roll call. Would the clerk call the roll? We have 16 present. Thank you. Next is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. Next, we'll go on to the approval of the minutes from our last meeting, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There are no resignations, and we have one council appointment, City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. <laughs> to the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, Rosemarie Trester from the North Flats Neighborhood Association, be appointed 11-3-14 and expire, a term would expire 4-30-2015, and Ken Van Orden, North Flats Neighborhood Association alternate for those same dates, signed by the Mayor. That appointment will, or those appointments will lie over. We haven't approved their, uh, their formal association status yet that's on the agenda uh, for today. Next, uh, we have a program. John Dole is here, the executive director of the Sheboygan County United Way, and he's here to make a br uh, brief presentation on their campaign for this year. John, please join us in front. Want me to go here? Yep. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me here today. I'll just try to take a, a few minutes, but not too long. Uh, <laughs> United Way's campaign kicked off and, and really keeps going all year long for the most part at this, uh, its really biggest, most important <coughs> part of the time is in the fall season, obviously. That's when our biggest campaigns go. But uh, I wanted to let you know, just really, if you, can, if you can remember four things when you're done with, when I'm done speaking tonight. First off, um, we continue to fund about 22 different agencies roughly 50 programs within those agencies, and we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to, um, to, to look at the best programs in the, in the county and in the community to, to fund. However, there's four areas that we're really taking a really hard look at the last couple of years, and we want to focus on and really begin to take to scale some of the key things that these, that these four programs are going to be focusing on. Uh, the first one is uh, the, the idea of uh, early learning and birth to basically birth to four, birth to five year old uh, learning. Um, there's a really good program that's out of the Family Resource Center in Plymouth called the Parents as Teachers Program. It's a ho home visitation program that's been around for, for many, many years in the county itself, I think somewhere around 15 or 16 years. Uh, and United Way has been supporting that all along to one small degree. Uh, there are about 1,200 kids that are born every year in Sheboygan County, uh, and many of those to first-time uh, first parents. So uh, right now, the, the Family Resource Center is able to handle about 100 of those families. And basically, it's the, the idea is that a child is born learning. The child is born when the minute they are out of the womb, basically, they start to learn. And I tell the story of my, of my daughter, Becca, uh, I was in the birthing room when she was born, and within five minutes of her being born, the nurse handed me, handed her to me in a in a small blanket, and I looked down at her, and she looked up at me, and I didn't, I could think of nothing more uh, mature to do, so I stuck out my tongue, and she looked at me for a second and stuck out her tongue which told me that she was beginning to learn immediately. She was emulating me. She was mimicking her father the moment she was born, pretty much. Uh, within, uh, within about three or four days of that, my wife said, here, read her this book, Good Night Moon. And I looked at my wife and said, she's not going to understand what I'm talking about. How can she possibly know what I'm saying? Sit down, read her the book. So I did. And within a couple more sessions of that, I would say, moon, and she would point to the moon. 
and I would say bunny, and she'd point to the bunny and to the cat and everything else. So it really uh, sent it home to me that, that children are, or that the parents have to be the, the child's first teacher. And all too often we don't see that happening in our, in our uh, families. Uh, and, it's, and it's a universal challenge. And you, a person could be an isolated family, uh, immigrant family, just moving to the country that's kind of in a, in a tough economic situation. Or it can be two vice presidents at Kohler that are having a child and they don't know what to do. Kind of like me. I was a vice president when my daughter was born and I didn't know that much about parenting. So this idea of trying to take this, this partic one particular program that's in Plymouth and, bring, and begin to bring it to scale and to begin to make that kind of a social norm in the county and we're going to look to try to do that over the next number of years. That's one big program. The other one, uh, we, had a, we had a summit. La we, we convened a group of us, um, convene, convened a community conversation at Blue Harbor last March. And we had over 320 people from all different walks of life, people like you, people from, from the, uh, the health care system, people from the schools, law enforcement, uh, any a number of people that came. I remember one person, and we, and we talked about mental health. And the, the whole subject was to discuss mental health and the crisis that we're having as not only uh, as this community but across the country. The, uh, beginning to realize that mental illness drives so many of our other chronic diseases. So uh, I remember one person that was sitting at my table was uh, a, a woman and she had a son that was addicted to heroin and she was at wit's end as to what to do, how, to, how can we keep this, you know, how can this happen in our community and what do I do with my son, where do I go? Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, it was about a five hour session and a lot of conversation was had. And at the end of the day, three subjects came to my, came to the top, that floated to the top. One was access to mental health. The next one was coordination of mental health services. And the last one, I think, is the most important, was education about mental illness and about an awareness of mental health and mental illness itself. Uh, so from that, uh, we continue to go forward. One of, the, one of the missions that we have at United Way is to try to make this, make people more aware of mental illness and its important and its relationship to chronic disease. So that's one thing that you'll hear more and more from, uh, of, from us. Um, the third thing is the area of uh, food, of healthy food distribution in the county. We have many, many pantries. We have a food bank. And oftentimes, a lot of them aren't necessarily talking together or, con or, or working uh, to, for the betterment of the community to be able to get it to the point where everybody who needs healthy food can get it. So we're working on that. We're trying to knit together a network. One of our success stories over the summertime was uh, the summer lunch program for free and reduced lunch. Uh, kids at, who, are, who qualify for free and reduced lunch, and it's a higher, higher number now, uh, are, don't have access to a free or reduced lunch in the summertime. So we, can, we work together with uh, the Boys and Girls Club and the school, uh, Sheboygan, Sheboygan County School District, and we pulled together a network that we were able to, to give, we were able to provide 750 kids a day with lunch, and so we'll continue to do that. The last thing is the Volunteer Center. Uh, up until June, um, the Volunteer Center was housed in, a, in, a, in an agency, uh, and, and the agency decided they didn't want to deal with, the, with the, found, uh, the, the Volunteer Center any longer. So it was either the Volunteer Center and the Day of Caring and all of that was going to go away, or United Way was going to have to take it on. So we, we stepped up to the plate and we brought it in-house, and we've hired a director. And you'll hear more and more about volunteerism as, you'll, as, as the time goes by. We're, our mission is really to connect those people who want to volunteer with uh, nonprofit agencies that have programs and projects that need to be done in the community. So that's it for me. Anybody have any questions? John, thanks so much for your Thank presentation. You. I hope it's a great campaign this year. The city uh, handed all the pledge sheets out to their employees about two weeks ago, and we're trying to wrap everything up by the 21st of November, and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. And all the aldermen have some pledge sheets on their desk if they'd like to participate as well. Thank you. Have a good much. evening. Next, we'll go on to the public forum. City Clerk. Yes, we have one person this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me, Joe Lamb. If you could come on up to the front podium. And 
Joe, can I have your home address, please? My name is Joe Lamb. I live at 4010 North 30th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Um, I'm here to represent Midlake Softball Organization. Back in March, the Common Council approved us to run the softball program at Wild Ruth Athletic Park. Um, I'm just here to give you a brief update as to what happened last this past season. Um, in the short term, we had 92 teams that had registered for the for the program. 91 finished the season. Um, we had over a thousand player cards issued to members. We ran two tournaments, one for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation and then one for Toys for Tots. Those were both benefit tournaments. Um, we had planned on, uh, we expect to give about $9,000 out to those organizations. The entry fees, anything from concessions is staying with the Midlake Softball Organization. The donations to them were actual extra cash that we had collected from the players to give to those organizations. Um, we, I gave out a list to all the aldermen. Um, we had park improvements in the range of $12,000. Some of those are donated, some were cash, or, and some were items. Items were donated to us and they were put into the park. Um, we have, Community Bank has given another $5,000 for the total of $17,000. And on behalf of the players and the board of directors, I'm honored to um, hand the mayor of the city a, a check for another $7,500 for park improvements down at Wildwood Park. Any questions? I'd just like to... Uh, Thank Joe and all the volunteers for, for the Midlake Softball Association for all the work they've done, mostly um, helping us keep the park up, keep it as a, a premier facility for all of the softball players here in Sheboygan. Great job. Thank you. Thank you much. Next, we'll move on to mayor's announcements. Um, I had the uh, pleasure of issuing a proclamation last Friday. Uh, it was Mike Kinzel's last day of working for WHBL, so I went down to the studios at 8 o'clock in the morning and presented him with a proclamation and uh, made it Mike Kinzel Day all day last Friday. So he was ecstatic, uh, and it was uh, somebody that we really appreciated working with for the last 13 years. And tomorrow, if you don't know it, is election day. Please exercise that right to vote. And new for this election, the city results from all the city wards will be posted on the city website, and uh, they'll also be forwarded to the Sheboygan County uh, Clerk's Office at the same time. So if you go to a banner headline on our website, you'll be able to see those, and then after we get all the results in, uh, the Clerk's Office will put a tabulation up as well. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda and include items 2.2 through 2.14. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing now, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Two on I. I'm sorry. My computer's on. Okay. Got it. Two or I. Mark, okay. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll be going on to reports of officers that include items 3.1 through 3.10. Alderman Hammond. Oh, I'm sorry. All these documents are, are meant to be referred to various committees. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to, um, I guess, send item 3.4 along with items 6.1, 6.3, and 8.1 and have them all referred to the Committee of the Whole. 
Um, I do see that we are having a committee of whole, or that item 6.5 is also being referred to the committee of the whole. I just think if we're going to have a discussion in reference to these items, the chief administrative uh, position going forward, and possibly changes in duties and so on, I think we should have that discussion at the committee of the whole. That way everybody gets the opportunity to have the same information, the opportunity to ask some questions, and then uh, I guess make a decision before going to council. So I would like to send all of those items to the committee of the whole and we can have a meeting and have an open and honest discussion about moving forward. Thank you for that motion. Second. Alderman Hammond. I second it. Okay, we have a second under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to divide the question. I'd like to take a 3.4, or excuse me, a 6.1 for a separate vote. Second. Okay. Um, the first uh, motion then will be on 6.1. Okay, hold on just a second. Just hold a second. David, who seconded your motion? Alderman Bourne? And that was to refer the four? Yes. Well, under discussion, Alderman Bourne, this is on 6.1. Yes, thank you. Uh, what was your reason for uh, dividing the question, Alderman Hammond? Go ahead, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this was taken up in salaries and grievances and was discussed there. I completely uh, have no problem with 6.3 um, um, by Alderman Koth um, wanting to double the salary of, of the older persons, the job description, <laughs> and going to um, you know, the reduction of the council, all going to committee of the whole, those are committee of the whole kinds of discussions, but the extension of a contract, in my opinion, is kind of mutually exclusive. If we change the job description um, and uh, Chief Amodio is in that position, <coughs> that just has to deal with the change of the job description. Um, the committee um, agreed 4-1 that they wanted to extend the contract um, and so again, I think these things, these two things are mutually exclusive and um, unless somebody can give me a compelling reason from a job performance standpoint um, that we should take that up um, in closed session um, at the Committee of the Whole, um, I don't know um, why we would not approve the contract as the committee recommended. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> That was kind of my thinking. If this was going to go to the Committee of the Whole, uh, I brought up, uh, and I would agree, probably it should be in, cl in closed session, but one, one of the reasons why uh, uh, I thought that this document 6.1 should have had further discussion had nothing to do with the person that's in the job. My idea was to find out from the council, and that's why I think it's a good idea to go to the, to the Committee of the Whole, whether the position that was created four years ago has met the expectations of the council. And that was another reason why I came up with some suggestions for, for the job description. And uh, if, we, if this was going to go to the Committee of the Whole, I would agree it probably could, should go, in, go into closed session so that the council can be made uh, privy to any uh, uh, evaluations of the current Chief Administrative Officer, so that the council could be made privy to that. Uh, anything that could be that we could be made aware of, as far as the performance evaluations that I take it for granted that have that those have taken place the last three or four years. So uh, I just think that four people or five people voting on this at the committee or at the committee level, when this is something that's very very important for the city. Uh, you know, basically, there was very little discussion at, at, the, uh, at the Salary and Grievance Committee other than Mr. Amodio saying he was interested in staying another year. This is probably the most important uh, reappointment or new appointment that we're going to be making. And I, I agree with Alderman Van Akron uh, is, is that I think the, uh, the full council should be privy <coughs> to any performance evaluations in closed session and any suggestions that we should have, that the council may have, before we go in carte blanche, uh, give another year extension. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, 
you know, first off, I, as I mentioned to people quite often, is that our committee meetings are certainly open to everybody. This has been on the agenda. It lied over on the agenda. Um, people could have came to the salaries and grievances uh, committee meeting and expressed their opinion or had the conversation. Um, as far as, you know, whether or not the position is going to change, unless there's a document in here I haven't seen about removing the position of the chief administrative officer, all I've seen is changing the job descriptions and the preliminary scene was more so things like who um, does the evaluations and a few tweaks around the edges of um, input and various things like that. So I haven't seen a wholesale change in how this position, um, whether it's going to exist or not. So again, I don't know that these things are, are attached to each other. You know, whether or not Director Amodio or Chief Amodio stays is more of a performance issue than whether or not we're going to keep. Now, if there's a document in here that I'm not aware of that says, hey, we're looking at getting rid of the chief administrator officer's position, um, you know, then yeah, we should maybe table that and go to committee of the whole and have that conversation. But there's nothing in here that indicates that. So again, I think these two things are mutually exclusive. Um, the salaries and grievances committee um, discussed it um, and uh, voted for one. So uh, I won't be supporting that. Thank you for those comments. And then Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess my motives are, are, are simply that the, the current term is set to expire in 2015. Um, that's how it was originally set up. Um, I think it's a good time if we're going to be talking about the chief administrative position anyways and possible amendments. Um, I do agree with Alderman Hammond that I think those things are exclusive. Um, however, if we are going to have a conversation about it at the Committee of the Whole, then we should talk about the position itself, not any one individual, not a personality, but the position itself, what we expect out of it, um, where we want to go from here. Um, so I do think it's a good opportunity. We've had a chief administrator for four years. I think we should have a discussion as to, um, again, where we've been and where we should be going. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I guess I'll just take what you said in regards to um, keeping the personality out, out of it. That's exactly why this document should not go to Committee of the Whole. At Committee of the Whole, we can talk about the position going forward. However, right now, all we're doing is simply voting on extending his contract for a year. It was voted on four to one. They, they could have had that, com or they could have had any conversation they wanted to have in salaries and grievances, but for some reason that didn't happen uh, for whatever reason. However, once again, this document should not go to committee to hold because as it's already been said, it's mutually exclusive. It's simply a one-year extension to the current contract that's in place. If we happen to make any changes in the job description in the committee of the whole meeting, then the person sitting in that chair is just gonna have to accept it. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other mm -hmm. discussion, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion to uh, approve item 6.1 going to the committee of the whole. No, first of all, we have to vote on division of the question. No, I, I, I'm just accepting that we're dividing it. I don't, think, I don't think we need a vote on it. And the discussion has all been on 6.1. So um, if there's no other discussion, I'd just like to call for a vote on 6.1 going to uh, the, um, the original committee, which would be rather to lie over. And uh, so if you want to... Um, send 6.1 to the committee the whole, you'd vote yes. And if you wanted to continue to lie over, you'd vote no. Is there any other discussion? Okay, then the clerk will call the roll. is asking me the wrong question. <laughs> Do you want yes or no? Uh, no. No. Okay. Uh, six eyes, ten no's, the motion fails. Okay, so 6.1 will continue to go to, to rather to lie over. And then we have the original motion is to refer 3.4, 6.3, and 8.1 to the Committee of the Whole. That motion is before us. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Alderman Hammond? Um, thank you. Just a point of clarification. 8.1 is the motion to adjourn. <laughs> 
So oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we can refer that to committee of the whole. I'm okay with that. But uh, no, I'm sorry. But 9.1 is a motion no, no, to no, adjourn. 8.1 .1 is the oh. in our seat with salary and grievances. I have the wrong one then. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. <laughs> My sorry. apologies. We're on the wrong agenda. <laughs> okay. Is there any discussion on the remaining uh, referrals? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll on the uh, referrals. If you wanted to go to the Committee of the Whole, you'd vote yes. And if you wanted to stay to the original designations, you'd vote no. That's not the right question. Asking about the JCs. Oh no, this is JCs. Oh, is it the wrong one? Yeah, read that. What's that? Was it in here? Yeah, it's another box. Referred to four doc or three documents: three point four, six point three, eight point one. Mike, do you have yours? Twelve eyes, two no's. Okay, those three documents then will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Um, so now we're back to uh, reports of officers and the remaining items that we didn't talk about will be referred to the various committees. Under Section 4, Resolutions, um, 4.1 will lie over. And uh, 4.2 through 4.6 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of officers, uh, 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 126 of 1415 submitting various licenses and recommends that beverage operators license application number 6733 be denied based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convic convictions on her application, her record of viol li violations related to the licensed activity, and her record as a repeat law offender and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. <coughs> Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Under discussion. Is Diana Raminger, Raminger here this evening? She is not. We uh, invited her two different occasions and she did not appear. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll for passage? It worked. Mouse is really tearing up, so <laughs> it worked. Getting power. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 163 of 1415 submitting various licenses and recommends that beverage operator license number 0537 be denied based upon her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Amanda Drews here? She's not. Um, we invited her back to our committee after we held this matter and she did not show up. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is an RC by law and licensing to has referred RO number 138 of 1415 submitting various license applications and recommends that beverage operator license application number 8464 be denied based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Under discussion. 
Is Tracy Haygood here this evening? She's not. Uh, the committee voted four to zero with one abstention to deny the license. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Um, six point one will lie over. Six point two through six point five will be referred to various committees, with the exception of six point three, which is going to the committee of the whole. Um, under matters laid over, item seven point one is general ordinance number thirty two of fourteen fifteen by Alderman Donahue, Dassler, Boren, Hammond, and Vanderweel, amending the municipal code as to add a part time clerk in the building inspection division slash city uh, planning department. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would move approval. Is there a second? Second. We have motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? See now will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Um, number eight, other matters. That's going to be referred to the committee of the whole. And um, under nine point one, Alderman Hammond. I did. <laughs> Under other matters, city attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, RO uh, by the city clerk, this is document 9.1, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2014, December 31, 2015, and June 30, 2016. Shall it be referred to law and licensing? 9.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Alexis Torres requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1127 North 8th Street. Referred to public protection and safety. 9.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Alexis Torres requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 930A Michigan Avenue or 1123, 1125 North 14th Street depending upon availability. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 9.4 is a claim from Rene Gallegos for alleged damages to his vehicle when a tree in Evergreen Park fell on his SUV. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. Now Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion. Will the clerk call the, well, all, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.